I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So tonight we begin our journey of Lent. We think of it as a journey, as a pilgrimage, as joining with Christ on his journey toward Jerusalem, toward his suffering, toward his death, and ultimately toward his resurrection. And so we go on this 40-day journey that begins today, and this service of Ash Wednesday has all of the themes of Lent really crammed into it. And Lent, uh, likewise, sort of has all of the themes of the Christian life crammed into it, so that Ash Wednesday is this really compressed um, bundle of themes and ideas and actions that we do, sort of embody, that all have to do with the Christian life. Um, so you picked a good day to come to church. So a couple of these themes. First of all, as everybody knows, even people who aren't Christians, that Lent is about giving something up. It's about um, fasting. It's about praying a whole lot. And our readings have a lot to say about that. They, uh, they say you should do all those things, but not just the outward action, not just the appearance of them, right? God is very much interested in the inner attitude. God is very much interested that instead of fasting and praying and making a big show out of it and then going off and fighting with people and um, speaking evil about people, lying to people, instead of going off and exploiting people and then coming to church and praying and fasting, God calls that hypocrisy. Likewise, what Jesus says, which I always think is funny on, on Ash Wednesday, to read uh, that passage of Matthew, and it was done intentionally, that tension is, is given to us intentionally, where Jesus says, if you're going to fast, don't look dismal. Don't, like, you know, rub stuff on your head. Um, you know, don't go around looking like you're all holy. And yet, we, you know, we are going to put some stuff on our head if, if you want. Um, but Jesus, the point that Jesus is making is that our outward actions, whether we are giving something up, whether we're putting something on our head, whether we're um, taking on an extra discipline of prayer or of study, of reading a book, that those outward actions must also accompany and, and, and really should foster an inward attitude of the heart. And it's really that intention of the heart. It's, it's really our, our wills and our desires yearning toward God. That's, that's what matters. That's the sacrifice that God wishes. It's really striving for justice with other, with other people and, and, and exhibiting what the kingdom of God looks like on this earth. That's what our, our outward action and our inward life should be about. Another theme that Ash Wednesday um, wraps around for us is the theme of death, right? Preparing for our death. When, um, in a moment, when we do those ashes, we'll say that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. And so we are invited to contemplate our death and to prepare our death, and that's really what the Christian life is about, is about preparing to have a good death. Our psalm, Psalm 103, um, that has all of these themes in it, it talks about how God knows who we are. God made us. God knows, the psalmist says, that we are dust, that our days are like grass, that we flourish like the flower of the field, and then we wither away. But, the psalm says, the merciful goodness of the Lord endures forever. And so, the theme of death, the theme of fasting and giving things up, it, it's about also the theme of sin, right, and the repentance of sin. We'll read in a moment Psalm 51, which is this great psalm of repentance. It's King David repenting for his great sins, and he says, wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. And when we exhibit that repentance, 
the psalmist says that God will cast our sins as far as the east is from the west. Bless the Lord, O my soul, the psalm says, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name because he forgives all our sins and he heals all our infirmities. But it isn't just our sin that we are repenting tonight for, and, and we should, and, and, and Lent is a period where we contemplate our weaknesses and our sins, and we repent from them, and we try to amend our lives. But it is not only that. Our reading from 2 Corinthians talks about how Christ became human and took on sin onto himself, even though he personally was without sin. We are the body of Christ. And so Ash Wednesday is a time for the whole universal church, us and every other gathering of the church all around the world, to, as, as one preacher says, to turn in onto ourselves and to pray for the sins of the whole world. As the body of Christ, we are taking on the sins of the whole world and we are praying to God for forgiveness and mercy. We're praying to God for peace in our time. We're praying to God that God that 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 heaven comes down to earth and that our our life here on this earth matches more and more what God intends for it to be. And ultimately though, just as we cannot save ourselves, we cannot save the world, and yet Lent is ultimately about, and Ash Wednesday is ultimately about hope, and it's about resurrection, because the mercy of God endures forever. Our Psalm 103 says that God redeems our life from the grave and crowns us with mercy and loving kindness. I really love this tradition of the early church so fast forward 40 days, it's Easter, right? It's, it's Easter morning before the sun has dawned. And Christ has just come back to life after being dead for three days, after descending to hell. The tradition of the church is that the Psalms are Christ's prayer. And the Psalm that Christ begins to pray the moment he comes back to life is the Psalm that we're about to pray here in a few minutes, Psalm 51. And so as Christ takes that first, and, and it's all about this sin, right, and, and God's mercy washing away that sin, and then as Christ takes his first breath, the first thing that he says is Psalm 51, 16, Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. That's also the opening line of morning prayer, and we're going to say it here in a few minutes. I love that idea that that is where Jesus' first words after he came back to life. That is what Lent is ultimately about. It's about the mercy and forgiveness of God. It's about resurrection, which is more powerful than death. And so even as we lament our sins and the sins of the whole world, this is really about praise. We can make our prayer the same prayer as David, when he originally wrote Psalm 51, the same prayer as Jesus, when he came back to life on that third day, we can say, open our lips, O Lord, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise, because God's mercy is everlasting. Amen.